My dear brothers and sisters, good morning. I am your humble servant, Reverend Fire Charles Luanga Augustino Maria. I bring you greetings and a happy solemnity of Our Lady. Today, the Catholics celebrate the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. I would just uh, like to bring to you what is the church teaching on the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. Why do Catholics believe in the Immaculate Conception? The belief means that Mary, the mother of Jesus, was preserved without sin for her entire life. The Immaculate Conception means Mary was born without sin, or better still, original sin. This goes in line with the perpetual virginity of Mary before, during, and after the birth of Christ. It was Mary's closeness to Christ that made her receive God's fullness of grace. To be sinless without God's grace, it would have been impossible for Mary to be sinless, and she too will be like the rest of humanity. However, because of the decision to say yes, in giving birth to Christ, she was given a special privilege by having no sin touch her. Catholics believe that God wanted perfectly pure a perfectly pure woman to carry his son, the God of the universe, for nothing else short of perfection will do. The Immaculate Conception of Mary continues to be a major disagreement point by Christian denomination towards the Catholic faith. Many people say that the Immaculate Conception somehow takes away from Christ's glory and message. Some will say that the belief in Mary is not found in the Bible or that it is bluntly contradicts the Bible's words. There are also thousands of people who mistakenly believe what the church teaches about the Immaculate Conception, which unfortunately has led to many misguided opinions. What evidence do Catholics have to defend their belief in Mary's Immaculate Conception? Evidence from the Scripture. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Luke 1 verse 28. It is the term full of grace that is emphasized by the church when dealing with Mary. Immaculate Conception. The title full of grace comes from the Greek word kekaritomene, which describes a perfection and abundance of grace. In other words, Mary was proclaimed by the angels to be with a perfection of grace, which was a very powerful statement. How can Mary be completely and perfectly with God's grace, yet still have sin left in her? Christians eventually came to recognize that it was extremely possible for Mary to be without sin, especially if she was completely filled with God's grace. Luke 1 verse 28 happens to be the only place in the Bible where anyone is addressed with the important title of full of grace. The Holy Ghost shall come upon you and the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Therefore, also that holy thing which shall be born of you shall be called the Son of God. Luke 1 35. Luke 135 shows Mary as the Ark of the New Covenant. According to the Old Testament, the Ark of the Covenant was a pure and holy vessel that held the Ten Commandments. 
the old covenant. The ark was so holy, in fact, that if anyone were to touch it, they would actually fall down and die. It was housed in the Holy of Holies, which was a perfectly clean place where the Jewish high priest could enter only once a year according to their law. See Leviticus 16 verse 2 to 4. So how are Mary and the Acts related? The same language that describes God's dwelling place for the old ark is used again for Mary, overshadowing by the Holy Spirit. Put another way, the old ark held God's Ten Commandments and could not be touched by human hands because of its holiness. Mary, the new ark, holds the new covenant in her womb, which is Jesus Christ. How much holier is Christ than the Ten Commandments? It only makes sense that for Mary to hold God in her womb, she too will be completely pure and without sin. I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed, offspring, and hers. She will crush your head while you strike at her heel. Genesis 3 verse 15. What does the book of Genesis have to do with Mary's Immaculate Conception? Genesis 3 verse 15 is the first passage in the Bible that refers to Jesus defeating Satan on the cross. It is also the first verse that shows us how Mary will become the new Eve, the seed of the woman who will crush the serpent's head. Is Jesus, the woman at enmity or hostility with the serpent is Mary. It was God's it was God who put this hostility between Mary and Satan, the serpent, and it is believed to be in the same likeness as Christ's hostility for the seed of the serpent. What exactly does all this mean? For Mary to be like Christ in his hostility for Satan forever, it is very possible to say that this passage implies Mary's lack of sin. What better way is there to be in total hostility with Satan than to be in God's constant grace? As the new Eve, Mary undid the no of the Old Testament Eve by saying yes. To carry Jesus. Above was the evidence from the Bible. Now let me give you historic evidence. Pope Pius the Ninth officially defined the doctrine of the Immaculate Conception in the year 854. He did so with the understanding that this belief would help the Catholic faith grow spiritually towards Christ. The belief that Mary was without sin was not invented as numerous people mistakenly think. Many are still under the false impression that the Immaculate Conception was not extremely strong roots in church writing going well back into the 4th century. Every personal sin must be excluded from the Blessed Virgin Mary for the sake of the honor of God, St. Augustine said that in 390 AD. Mary, a virgin not only undefied, but a virgin whom grace has made inviolate, free from every sin. St. Ambrose of Milan. St. Ambrose was the master of St. Augustine, 340 to 370 AD. You and your mother are alone in this. You are wholly beautiful in every respect. There is in you, Lord, no stain, nor any spot in your mother. St. Ephraim. St. Ephraim lived in 350 AD. In fact, there are literally dozens of cases where early church fathers had mentioned Mary as being without sin, using such words as all holy one, all sinless one, 
and immaculate. It proves that the idea of Mary's sinlessness was not uncommon in the first few centuries of the church. As time passed, the Eastern Church began to show its strong love for the Immaculate Conception with its own feast day beginning in the 8th to 9th century. By the 12th century, the Western Church was celebrating the Feast of the Immaculate Conception all over Europe. By the end of the 15th century, it was universally recognized and defended as true Christian doctrine. Common Objections and Questions Does the Immaculate Conception mean that Mary conceived Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit? This happened to be a popular misconception by many people. What you are referring to is the incarnation of Jesus Christ and not the Immaculate Conception. The incarnation is the belief that Jesus came into the world as fully man and fully God. The Immaculate Conception is the belief that Mary was conceived into the world without sin to carry Christ. Let us not mistake it with the perpetual virginity of Mary before, during, and after the birth of Christ. Many will ask, doesn't the Bible say in Romans 3 verse 23 that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God? At first glance, this all have seen me appear to contradict a Catholic's belief in Mary's Immaculate Conception. However, on further examination, it is not an impossible verse to overcome. For Catholics, Mary is seen as an exception to this passage, as are children under the age of reasons and mentally disabled people. With both of these examples, these groups are unable to sin because of their lack of reasoning. For example, a child who does not understand what sin is cannot sin because the child is unaware of what is right and wrong. Now granted, a child who does not understand sin is not entirely like Mary, but it does not show that there are exceptions to the all have seen rule. And mentally disabled people are not liable to sin, since it must be a conscious act against God. After this, the next question will be, what about original sin? Adam and Eve passed sin down to us when they ate the forbidden fruit. This is true. But even original sin has its exceptions. Both Adam and Eve were originally created without sin, as were God's multitude of angels. This simply shows that it is not impossible for God to create living beings without the stain of original sin. So, Mary, whose mission was to carry the holiest of holiest, was freed from this sin like angels. Her efforts to preserve herself gave her the merits. My people, remember, even Satan was free, was free from sin from creation. Like today, some people see some things like chastity as an impossibility. Still, the passage reads that all have sinned. So both Adam and Eve and the rest of humanity must have seen during their existence. What the Catholic wants to show is that there are exceptions to the rule. We understand that all have sinned, but believe that Mary and Jesus are not included in this verse. The all in Romans 3 verse 23 was translated from the Greek word pass. Like the usage of the word all today, it does not necessarily mean each and every person, with no exception. For instance, in the same letter to the Romans 11 verse 26, St. Paul says that all Israel will be saved. And in Matthew 2 verse 3, 
it says, all of Jerusalem were troubled, yet were all of Israel going to be saved? Or was each and every person in Jerusalem troubled? There are plenty of other examples like these found all throughout the Bible. The main point is that the word all had many different meanings in the Greek language and that it does not rule out the possibility of, of exceptions in Romans 3 verse 23. The fact remains that the words Mary was without sin are not found in the Bible. Why do Catholics continue to believe in it? True, the words Mary was without sin cannot be found in the Bible. However, one will not find the direct wording of Mary was with sin either. As shown above, Catholics believe that the Immaculate Conception has implied evidence for it within Scripture. Add this to the large amount of early church writings on the topic and it is no wonder why Catholics continue to believe in it. But if Mary didn't sin, does that mean she didn't need Christ as her Savior? No, no, no. It does not mean that Mary did not need Jesus as her Savior. This is one of the most common misunderstandings with other Christian denominations. Think of it this way. If Jesus did not make Mary perfectly sinless, she too would have sinned like everyone else. As was the case with Mary, we too will one day be without sin when we are in heaven. Mary was preserved without sin before she was born, in order that she may hold Christ in her womb. So Mary fits all, Mary fits the all have sinned in an indirect way if God did not intervene with his grace. Mary will be with sin. She needed Christ as a savior to keep her from sin in the first place. Just as Christ's death on the cross will keep us free from sin in heaven. Doesn't Mary's lack of sin take away from Jesus Christ? We will why would it? To Catholics, the belief in the Immaculate Conception is as much about Christ as as it is about Mary. Jesus was a holy, Jesus was so holy, so awesome, and so divine that he made a woman perfectly pure just so he could enter the world through her. How does that take away from Christ? The Immaculate Conception simply reinforces how powerful and perfectly holy Jesus Christ truly is. Christ said, you cannot put new wine into an old wine skin. No, old wine into a new wine skin. How did you expect Christ to feed into a sinful Mary? Why did it take so long for the belief in the Immaculate Conception to come about? Why was it not defined right after Jesus' death? 1854 is a long time after Jesus. Yes, 1854 is considered by most to be a long time after Jesus. However, most Christians believe, including the Trinity, the Incarnation, and the New Testament books, took centuries before they were made official Christian beliefs. This does not mean that they were not true but that they took time to define prop to be defined properly. The same goes for the Immaculate Conception. There were many early church fathers who believed that Mary was sinless, but it was not the most important issue that needed to be addressed in the early years of the church. For example, it was more important to discuss Jesus and his divinity than Mary's complete lack of sin. How could the church teach about Mary's lack of sin if they had not yet come to certain conclusions about Jesus' divinity? Didn't St. Thomas Aquinas, the great church philosopher, disagree with the Immaculate Conception? Some will ask. I thought he was a very significant church father. Yes, St. Thomas Aquinas 
did disagree with the Immaculate Conception, but he did not disagree with the belief that Mary was without sin. The debate arose over if Mary was conceived in her mother's womb without sin, and if this affected her need for Christ as a Savior. Of course, this philosophical debate was finally settled by Don Scotus in the 13th century, whose writing cleared up all complaints over Mary's need for Christ. With his help, the belief in the Immaculate Conception became standard teaching within the churches and universities of Europe. This debate over this debate over when and not if Mary was made sinless is one of the reasons why the church did not officially define the doctrine until 1854. It just goes to show how the church does its research and evaluation on topics before making them official teachings. Origen, St. Basil, and St. Christostom were early church fathers. Doesn't that prove that Mary was believed to have sinned? No, it does not. Although these early church fathers believe Mary to have sinned, there are just as many, if not more, who believe that she did not. Some examples of those who called Mary as the new Eve include Irenaeus, Justine, Tetulian, Cyril of Jerusalem, and Sedulius. Further examples of Mary absolute purity include Father Max Maximum of Turin, Ambrose, Augustine, Theodorus of Jerusalem, and John Damascene. The list of names and examples continues to go on and on throughout history. Even Martin Luther, the German theologian, who helped to create the Protestant Reformation, believed in Mary's complete lack of sin. Catholics are perfectly justified to say that there have been many writings about Mary's sinlessness in all periods of the church, including that of Martin Luther. Some people will tell me you bring up some convincing evidence, but I am still not sure about the belief. To me, that's okay. It is not always an easy belief to grab from non-Catholics. However, one should remember that it was by Jesus and for Jesus that Mary was created sinless. Without his grace, it would be impossible for such a thing to happen. Finally, it is important to say that Mary is not equal to Jesus in any way, simply because she is without sin. Sometimes it comes off like that to people who do not understand the Catholic view of Mary. Jesus is without sin because he is God. Mary is without sin because Jesus made her so. Therefore, when we see the Immaculate Conception, we actually see Christ's perfection, his love, and his divine greatness. For those who believe, no proof is needed, and to those who do not believe, no proof will be enough. Happy Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception to you all. Pray for me. I am your humble servant, Mola Charles Liunga Yamatute. Reverend Friar Charles Luanga Augustino Maria. And once more I say, Happy Feast of the Immaculate Conception. As you go about this great solemnity, remain blessed and pray that the Holy Spirit should guide us so that we can all be convinced about this teaching. Remain blessed and happy Sunday.